Good morning. We're going to look at Beatitude number two this morning. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Well, this verse is often used to comfort those who are dealing with losses like the death of a loved one. It is believed that this is not really what Jesus was referring to here. Don't get me wrong, though. God is our comforter when we lose someone we love, and I've proven that. It's speaking of those who are thinking of their own sin and how much their sin hurts the heart of God. One commentator notes that in the Greek language, there are nine different words to express sorrow. And of the nine, the one that Jesus used here is the strongest and most severe. It represents the deepest, most heartfelt grief and was generally reserved for grieving over a loved one. In the Old Testament, it was the word used for Jacob's grief when he thought his son Joseph had been killed by a wild beast. We have all read the accounts of the psalmist David's sin with Bathsheba, and we read in Psalm 51 the cry of David when he realizes the judgment against him and I read from the Living Bible. O oh, loving and kind God, have mercy. Have pity upon me and take away this awful stain of my transgression. Wash me and cleanse me from this guilt. Let me be pure again, for I admit my shameful deed. It haunts me day and night, and it is against you that I have sinned. Wash me, and I shall be clean. And after that, give me back my joy again. When we sin, no matter what it is, small or large in our eyes, it grieves the heart of God and it robs us of our joy. Because of time, I'm going to move on to the next beatitude. And the third one says, Jesus said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. In our society today, very often meekness is referred to as weakness, but that is not what Jesus meant here. In Psalm 37 and verse 11, we read, But all who humble themselves before the Lord shall be given every blessing and shall have wonderful peace. It is this meekness that Jesus says, which will inherit the earth. It is a fact of history that it has always been the men and women with the gift of self-control, with their passions and impulses under control who have been the great leaders. And one example is from the Bible in Numbers 12 and 3. It says of Moses, the greatest leader and greatest lawmaker that the world has ever known. Now the man Moses was very meek, more than all the men that were on the face of the earth. When I think of meekness and strength of character, I think of two officers who were on the staff when we were in college back in 1962, Colonel and Mrs. Elwood. And I know I have mentioned Mrs. Elwood before, that her son John was injured in a football game in high school, and he laid in a coma for many years. She, along with her husband, visited him regularly, <clears throat> or separately, or together. And eventually John passed away, went home to be with his Heavenly Father. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the day of their retirement, not long after John passed, the very first day, Colonel collapsed, collapsed that morning, and he died. I was speaking at a women's camp a few years later, and I saw Mrs. Elwood's name on the list of delegates, and I had not seen her since college days, 
but I was very much aware of her journey. So I went to see if I could find her. I was anxious to see how she was doing after all that she'd been through. And when I asked her, her face glowed and she looked up at me and she said, Oh, Mrs. Sharples, God has been so good to me. And I hardly knew what to say to her. She was a quiet woman, but she had a strength about her and she lived this life and she had for many years. She was familiar with every beatitude. She lived each one every day. And as I looked at her that day and the radiant smile on her face, hers was indeed a life that was flourishing, a life that was God blessed and full of quiet peace and joy. And her relationship with her Lord was as solid as a rock. Oh, the peace my Savior gives, peace I never knew before, and my way has brighter grown since I've learned to trust him more. Have a wonderful day. And our letter this morning to God is from Billy. He says, Dear God, I bet it's hard for you to love everyone in the whole world. There's only four in my family and I'm having a hard time loving all of them sometimes. See you tomorrow. <laughs>